Good evening and welcome to the um, contemplative service of our combined three churches at this moment. You're welcome to join us this evening or whenever you are tuning in to come and worship with us. It is based on today, which is service of chance and of silence, of scripture and of prayer. So you're invited to join us in that if you have a candle nearby. Um, we invite you now to light your candle. There will be opportunities during the, this service to um, sit in silence. There is a short silence within the video. If you would like a longer one, you of course can pause the video for as long as feels right for you. So having said all that, we pray that this service will be uplifting, will be restful, will be what you and God need it to be. Won't you join us? <laughs> Our psalm this evening is Psalm 19. We start with an Alleluia. <laughs> Heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them and nothing is hid from its heat. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. 
The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But who can detect their errors? Clear, from, clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Retired Episcopal Bishop John Shelby Spong, in his book, Jesus for the Non-Religious, wrote this piece about the Christ power that I thought important to share with you in this evening as we meditate on Jesus, the journey, our faith, the commitment, all those things that are important for all, or for all of us people of faith. So look at him. Look not at his divinity, but look rather at his freedom. Look not at the exaggerated tales of his power, but look rather at his infinite capacity to give himself away. Look not at the first century, century mythology that surrounds him, but look rather at his courage to be, his ability to live, and the contagious quality of his love. Stop your frenzy search. Be still and know that this is God. This love, this freedom, this life, this being. And when you are accepted, accept yourself. When you are forgiven, forgive yourself. And when you are loved, love yourself. Grasp the Christ power and dare to be yourself. That is, I believe, the pathway to God. The God whom I have encountered in the profound human Jesus, Shalom. With these beautiful words, let us take some time to meditate.
I will read from the gospel according to Mark, which is the reading for this week in the lectionary. I will read on chapter eight, a few verses from there. Jesus went on with his disciples and said to the village of Caesarea of Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him outside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses or their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for the life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Difficult words, an important question that I think each one of us must answer. So let's do that during this time of reflection.
Now we move into a time of intercessions. And this week we will remember September 11th in our intercessions. For the church, that she may continue to provide care and healing for all, especially those affected by the attacks on September 11, 2001, we pray to the Lord. For all victims of violence and terrorism around the world and for their families, that they may find comfort and peace, we pray to the Lord. For the safety, for the safety, for the safety of our service men and women abroad, for civil servants who protect us and keep us safe, and for all who live with war and violence, we pray to the Lord. For our leaders and for the leaders of nations, that they may work together to address the problems that provide fertile ground for the growth of terrorism, we pray to the Lord. For the ability to forgive and for an end to all hatred, beginning in our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. I will pray the Lord's Prayer written by Tom Hall, a member of the Jesus Seminar. Eternal Spirit, source of all that is and ever shall be, loving parent in whom we discern heaven, may knowledge of your holiness inspire all peoples, and may your commonwealth of peace and freedom flourish on earth until all of humankind heed your call to justice and compassion. May we find bread that we need for today. And for the hurts we absorb from one another, may we be forgiven in the same measure that we forgive. In the times of trial and temptation, help us to be strong. When life seems overwhelming, help us to endure. And thus, from the yoke of sin, deliver us. May you reign in the power of human law, now and forever. Amen. And then, in the spirit of the Lost Prayer, we are ready to move on. And so, in that sense, let me share with you a blessing for the journey. May the God who see you in all the colors of creation, arousing you a sense of awe and wonder. May the God who is sacred presence be real to you. May the God who is a source of inspiration and courage keep calling you forward. May your God go with you and bless you. Amen. Let
your servant now go in peace O Lord now go in peace according to your word let your servant now go in peace O Lord